Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we'll be looking at and reflecting on some of the psalms from the Bible, which were written as songs and can still be sung, but can also still be used as prayers. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 15 in the Dewey Rheims Bible, but Psalm 16 in the RSV. The inscription of a title to David himself. Brief description. Preserve me, O Lord, for I have put my trust in thee. I have said to the Lord, Thou art my God, for thou hast no need of my goods. Since God provides all the good things that exist, no other goods are really needed at all. To the saints who are in his land, he hath made wonderful all my desires in them. Those who do the will of God are a source of happiness and satisfaction for the writer of this psalm. Their infirmities were multiplied. Afterwards they made haste. I will not gather together their meetings for blood offerings, nor will I be mindful of their names by my lips. Animal sacrifices were bloody offerings, but the writer seems to be referring to people who aren't saints in this passage, people who were weakened and who he refuses to offer sacrifices from or even to talk about, probably people who turned away from God, which may be what the term make haste refers to. Most likely, therefore, this refers to the pagan sacrifices and offerings to idols, which often involved human blood being shed, or even the sacrifice of children's lives. The Lord is the portion of my inheritance and of my cup. It is thou that wilt restore my inheritance to me. I won't follow the people who turned away from God because he's the only chance I have for a worthwhile inheritance. The lines are fallen unto me in goodly places, for my inheritance is goodly to me. This probably refers to his respect for his ancestry, but it may also be an indication of his willingness to endure suffering for the rewards that God offers. I will bless the Lord, who hath given me understanding. Moreover, my reins also have corrected me, even till night. The writer of this psalm is very grateful to have been given a mind capable of thought, but even his feelings help him to find guidance. Reins is a term for the liver or kidneys, one place where the ancient Hebrews once thought the emotions came from. I set the Lord always in my sight, for he is at my right hand that I be not moved. I keep paying close attention to the will of God so the people won't tempt me to turn against him. Therefore my heart hath been glad, and my tongue hath rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh also shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, nor wilt thou give thy Holy One to see corruption. If we keep on persevering in holiness, we have every reason for hope, because God won't let such persistence go unrewarded. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt fill me with joy with thy countenance. At thy right hand are delights even to the end. God is the one who taught us how to get to heaven, where joys and delights are endless. God himself provides them with his presence, just as he created the universe from nothing. Again, this is a psalm of praise, specifically praise to God for his guidance and promises, because we know he's offering us a path to true happiness. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.